For global economies, right now it's a case of the chips are down, literally. Semiconductors, the brains in most electronic equipment these days, are in dangerously short supply. COVID seriously disrupted semiconductor supply chains last year. In turn, this affected production lines at the world's biggest chip manufacturers, Samsung in Korea, Intel in the US, and Taiwan's TSMC. Stockpiling, especially by China, has exacerbated the shortage. Semiconductor chips are basically becoming ubiquitous. They're everywhere, and, and that uh, demand is growing and growing. So that coupled with the, the, the drying up around COVID-19 and the slowing down in, in fabrication, that's what created this storm uh, around the supply chain. The automotive industry was hit first. Car makers Nissan, Toyota and Ford were forced to slash their production because they simply couldn't get enough chips. Since then, the crisis broadened to phones, televisions, gaming consoles and, bizarrely, to the music industry. The initial signs th that we saw were really that, that our suppliers of chips started to push out what are called lead times. So normally we'd put an order in and then they'd guarantee to be able to deliver it in a certain space of time. And so the first indication we really had was uh, several of our suppliers started pushing lead times out. Sometimes you have that for one supplier, but it's pretty rare that you get a whole lot of them all at the same time. Sydney company Ordinate's Emmy award-winning technology is used at live sound events like rock concerts, conference centres and stadiums. We're talking the biggest acts in the world. Think Elton John, the Foo Fighters, Bruce Springsteen. For a business like us, uh, we, we rely very much on uh, being able to, to, um, to buy chips and to supply electronics to our customers. So our, our customers are manufacturers. So we're kind of in the middle of this in that we try and buy chips and we program those chips and then we pass those chips on to our customers. So we're seeing the supply chain issues on the, on, from the chip vendors, but we're also seeing what you could think of as a kind of, you know, another version of the toilet paper hoarding problem where our customers are kind of trying to get in early and lock in as much supply as they possibly can. The shortage means the lead times to make anything that requires a computer chip have blown out right across the world. And though Australia has some specialist chip manufacturers, we don't have the manufacturing capability to anywhere near make up the shortage. It's a serious sovereign and economic risk. Australia's not really at all a semiconductor manufacturing company. We don't have any semiconductor capability like what you have in, in Taiwan, for instance, or the United States. Um, so in terms of how self-sufficient we are, we're not. We depend entirely on, on the global supply chain. Taiwanese multinational TSMC makes around half of the world's computer chips. It's already running at full capacity and is planning to build up to six more semiconductor factories to deal with the global supply issue. But one risk is China seeking to take control of Taiwan. If that were to happen, it would also control and dominate the global chip market. Australia can theoretically become a chip manufacturer, but it will take years to gain the scale we require. In other words, it's a risk to every business in the country. The timescale for, for development and production of a, of, a, of a semiconductor plant is three to five years to build something. And it's billions of dollars if you're going down the path of a big facility. But what we can do is look at what are the different niche areas around next generation technology that we could potentially say, OK, let's, let's, let's build a, a capability here in Australia that actually focuses in on that technology. This small silicon wafer here is the foundation for all computer chips on the planet. It has the potential to make hundreds of chips, chips that can turn up in your car, your phone and your TV. One local manufacturer is Western Sydney-based Blue Glass. Its chips will power blue laser beams. The technology is actually growing um, semiconductor wafers, essentially, to make a product which is, in this case, a laser diode. And that's widely used in applications such as you know, biomedical, display technology, industrial cutting and welding. So it's a very niche but very uh, rapidly growing um, area. Its product is set to launch to market later this year but it's specialist, not a volume, all-encompassing manufacturer that most companies rely on. To start off with, we probably see industrial cutting and welding. I mean, when, when I say industrial cutting and welding, you think about you know, electronics like your iPhone, there's lots of moving parts in there and they have to be precision welded and, and cut. 
And so blue lasers for that is absolutely a key technology. So to date, other technologies being used like um, CO2, fiber lasers, blue lasers increasingly becoming more of a relevant technology because it's so much more precise and as we develop higher power devices. So that's really probably the first cap off the rank, but there's plenty of other applications, quantum computing, biomedical, display technology. Western Australian business DUG Technology says lead times for the supply of computer chips has blown out. Its supercomputers perform complex algorithms for clients like Shell, Chevron and Santos. The lead times for getting computers is long now. So we um, you know, have a 40 strong R&D team in Perth. We write a lot of numerical algorithms and we, we crunch a lot of numbers and we process a lot of really large data sets. Um, we started in Perth, I started the company in Perth, but we're now in London, Malaysia, KL, Houston, and still in Perth, of course. DUG owns some of the most powerful computers in the world, which need to be kept cool with a synthetic oil. Uh, it's seismic processing is what we do. So there's about, in our toolkit, 275 algorithms that we've developed over the years. So we take the seismic data off the boats or off the land crews, and that just looks like some sort of record that is not very meaningful. And we turn that into like a cube of earth, if you like, that uh, a numerical cube of earth that geologists that can then go to work on and, and discern what's down below and what drilling targets might exist there. Professor James Rabot wrote a report last year on semiconductors, identifying the capabilities, opportunities and challenges for New South Wales' participation in the supply chain. He says Australia has the ability to become a tech leader in this space. We could make a strategic decision to invest in some infrastructure, some fabrication in infrastructure on semiconductor that perhaps in 10 years time we're really well positioned, for example, in to, to meet the needs of quantum computing or next generation IoT, artificial intelligence. The whole chip, the demand on semiconductor chips is just getting greater and greater. So if we can find a niche area to, to pick for Australia to, to focus in on, that would be a, a real benefit.